The Watts Riots happened on this date. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is August 11th, 2023. It is the 223rd day of the year. You got 142 days left. Get your act together, everyone. Complete that New Year's resolution. Today is the 32nd Friday in the 32nd week and the 52nd day of summer. There are 43 days left until fall. Today is National Son and Daughter Day. National Son and Daughter Day is celebrated annually on August 11th. The love-centric family holiday reminds us to take a step back from the whirlwind of paying bills surviving the maelstrom of current events and work and all that stuff, meeting our thousands of daily obligations and spend some time with our kids. That's what it's all about. All right, let's see what else August 11th has given us. 1929, Babe Ruth becomes the first baseball player to hit 500 home runs in his career with a home run at League Park in Cleveland, Ohio. 1943, the first civilian prisoner arrives at the federal prison on Alcatraz. 1942, actress Hedy Lamarr and composer George Antonelli received the patent for a frequency hopping spread spectrum communication system that later became the basis for modern technologies in wireless telephones, two-way radio communications, and Wi-Fi. Hedy Lamarr, actress, good-looking woman, smart cookie. 1965, the Watts riots begin in the Watts area of Los Angeles, California. I'd go deeper on this one, but we did it as the deep dive two years ago. 1982, a, a bomb explodes on Pan Am Flight 830 en route to Tokyo, Japan from Honolulu, killing one passenger and injuring 15 others. 1984, we begin bombing in five minutes. United States President Ronald Reagan, while running for re-election, jokes while preparing to make his weekly Saturday address on national public radio. It was a hot mic, and people heard it. They knew right away it was a joke, but this didn't stop the Kremlin from turning it into this is Ronald Reagan's sick fantasy and just turned into all that stuff. And anyone that was running against Ronald Reagan just threw it in his face. But Ronald Reagan, the country pretty much loved him. I think he had the highest approval rating while leaving the White House. Actually, Bill Clinton had a higher approval rating of 66 when his two terms were over. Ronald Reagan was 63. The next closest were Barack Obama and Dwight D. Eisenhower with 59. Now, the presidential approval rating has only been going on since 1952 when Harry S. Truman left. He left with a 32 approval rating. That's not the worst. Who was the worst? I'll let you guess. I wish I had some Jeopardy music right now, but I don't. You guessed it, Richard Nixon. He had a 24. Now, George W. Bush had the highest ever recorded during his term, but not his final one. After the 9-11 attacks, George W. Bush registered a 90% job approval rating. That's the highest in Gallup tracking history. The absolute lowest was Harry S. Truman with 22% job approval rating. The highest approval rating to date for Joe Biden has been 63, and for Donald Trump, 49. But What's funny about that is whenever you do something like that, your job approval rating either goes down or goes up. For Ronald Reagan at the time, he had a 74% approval rating. The week after that, it was 64. Within a month, it was back up in the mid 70s. I don't think it really matters as much as it used to. These days, it's just something they use to throw in someone's face. They really don't put much weight behind it because everyone is so split on their political views that it doesn't matter how bad of a thing the guy that you're on the side of did, you're going to ignore it. And the other way too, it's, it's weird time in this country. Now there are several different companies that do this approval rating thing. Most of them are very respected, but then there's a few that are almost there as props for whichever side of the political spectrum you're on. You always see the political mouthpieces on different, you know, news talk shows. They're talking about how, well, the president's approval rating is 99%. And then they never tell you what poll they got it from. You know, the big ones, Gallup poll, and Pew Research. Those are the big ones. Those are the accurate ones. And then people are just throw those ones out there. Well, it's 99% according to Dunkin' Donuts heavy glazed presidential approval survey. Yes, yeah, so presidential polls aren't all they used to be, but they're still sort of important as long as you're getting from reputable sources like Gallup and Pew, places like that. 1992, the Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota opens. At the time, the largest shopping mall in the United States. 2003, NATO takes over command of the peacekeeping forces in Afghanistan, marking the first major operation outside Europe in its 54-year history. Premiered on August 11, 1991, Ren and Stimpy. Now, I would like to talk about American Graffiti, because it was released on this date too, and I think it's one of the greatest movies ever made, but we did it last year. 
But if you've never seen Ren and Stimpy, this is the first cartoon that was just absolutely weird. I mean, it, it made no sense. It was strange. And then a flood of them came afterwards that were all pretty good. But Ren and Stimpy, in my opinion, was the one that started the strange cartoon for adults. This is how weird it is in case you've never seen it. A psychotic chihuahua and his dim-witted cat friend embark on a series of ridiculous adventures in an animated cartoon series. The show was originally created for Nickelodeon. The program ran for a total of 52 episodes over the course of five seasons. One episode titled Man's Best Friend was banned by Nickelodeon <laughs> because of its violent nature. Born on August 11th, 1961, Joe Rogan. Comedian who is best known for hosting a podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, which he launched in 2009. He also hosted the TV series Fear Factor and was in the NBC show News Radio. Before fame, he was born in New Jersey and raised in Massachusetts, California, and Florida. He competed in martial arts growing up. He became the announcer for the UFC in 1997. He also had a pretty good uh, show on sci-fi. It was called Joe Rogan Questions Everything. It didn't last that long, it should have. Died on this day, 2014, we lost Robin Williams, comedian and actor who won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his role in the 1997 movie Good Will Hunting. He's, I, you all know this, Robin Williams was one of the hardest losses we've had in a long time. We just talked about him on his birthday, July 21st, but he was a great person, you know, just so interesting, so bizarre, just wanted to make everyone happy, it seemed like. Couldn't make himself happy. Sadly, he took his own life on this day nine years ago. I saw some news outlets uh, report that he had died in Paradise City, California. No, he died in a town called Paradise K, which is in Tiburon, a very wealthy neighborhood. Paradise City is above Sacramento in Northern California. Most of the houses have broken down cars in their front yards. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, be nice to each other.